I'm Aditya Shahu and in this video I'll talk about vCenter Server Profiles, a new feature that we introduced in vSphere 7. Big enterprise customers and service provider customers generally employ multiple vCenter servers to manage their distributed vSphere environment. In a multi vCenter server environment, customers sometimes struggle to ensure that the desired state configuration is set to all the vCenter servers. In the absence of the desired state configuration, some vCenter server configurations may drift away, leading to an environment becoming non-compliant. The absence of a robust auditing mechanism to track down vCenter server configuration setting changes over a period of time is also one of the biggest challenges faced by customers in a multi vCenter server environment. So, what is the solution? vCent Server Profiles introduced in vSphere 7 addresses all our customers' pain points in a multi vCenter server environment. vCenter Server Profile feature empowers customers to capture a compliant vCenter Server's configuration details in a JSON based file, which acts as a template. Captured JSON file can be copied to the target vCenter servers ensuring that they all inherit the same configuration settings just like the host profile feature. After capturing and extracting compliant vCenter server configuration settings, customers can choose and edit the configuration settings to be propagated to the target vCenter server. This enables customers to ensure that while the target vCenter server adheres to the desired state configuration, they can still customize the deployment as per the business requirement. With vCenter Server Profiles, we have introduced four RESTful APIs that are capable of listing vCenter Server Profile components, exporting a vCenter Server Profile, validating a vCenter Server Profile, and last but not the least, importing a vCenter Server Profile. These APIs can be accessed from the Developer Center under the appliance endpoint in the vSphere client. Let us now see vCenter server profiles in action. In my demo environment, I have two vCenter servers deployed, parent vCenter server or parent VC and child vCenter server or child VC. Parent vCenter server is the compliant vCenter server with all the configuration settings like backup server, syslog server, NTP server populated. I have also created a customized role in the parent vCenter server which I would like to be propagated to the child VC. Child VC is the newly deployed vCenter server where we will import parent VC or parent vCenter server's configuration. Let us verify that child VC is at day zero configuration and does not have any configuration settings defined. To fire vCenter server APIs, I'm using Postman. Postman is a great tool to work with APIs. It offers a sleek user interface without the hassle of writing a bunch of code to test API functionality. More information on Postman can be found in the description box. All right. As a first step, I'll authenticate my session to the parent vCenter server. And here we see the session ID. This essentially means that we have successfully authenticated and we are ready to fire APIs. All right, let's get started. Let me first fire the list API to list the vCenter server profile components that can be exported out. And over here, we see a list output. Using vCenter server profile, List API, we can export appliance management, appliance network, and auth management configuration setting type. Let us now export compliant vCenter server configuration settings. As we can see, the export API has extracted the compliant vCenter server configuration details. I will now import this extracted configuration to the child vCenter server using the import API. And again, first we need to authenticate ourselves to the child vCenter server. And here we see the session ID. That means we have successfully authenticated ourselves. 
Let us now fire the import API with the extracted configuration as the payload. The import API takes some time to process and as a result we see 202 as the status code. Let us now log into the WAMI page of Child vCenter server to validate that the configuration settings are successfully imported. And here we see that our Child vCenter server has inherited the parent vCenter server configuration successfully. Let us also now log into the Child vCenter server to validate that it has inherited the customized role and permission set which we created in our parent vCenter server. And here we see that our child vCenter server has successfully inherited the customized role and permission set. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to subscribe co.vmware.com for more such videos.